What's up everybody? We are live. It is September the 2nd. We got a late start this morning, didn't we, Wyatt? Yeah. <laughs> Normally we're down here at like 5, 6, and 7 o'clock. Anyway, so we did a video, a short video about the uh, heights, but we figured we'd do a little bit more detailed of a video um, about what we've done so far to the car. We picked up an engine a couple days ago. This is a Gen 5 LT1. Um, it has the original, this is out of a 2016. It's got about 77,000 miles on it. This is the original trim tech. I think it's a TR6060. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it is the Gen 5 LT1. Um, yesterday took the headers off. Uh, because I did speak to the people at Heights, they thought we could just drop it as is, but I want to show that it looks like based off where the engine mounts go, because we bought this kit here, you can see it comes with the kit. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to clear based off what we're looking at. Um, it does have the stock pan on there, you can kind of see where it drops down. Um, right now we just got resting on some wood, but and I think this is the oil cooler system, which on the Holly, uh, Holly pan, um, apparently it negates this. It's just a plug. We don't, we don't actually need that system from what I've read. Um, I put these engine mounts on with the headers on. I wouldn't suggest that. I, I took the headers off after because I figured we're, we're going to have to swap the pan. So gonna have to change how we get this set up here um, we used the tractor yesterday to actually lift this off the skid that it came on and put it on to the let me back up a little bit to the actual lift here um, again on the other side did the same thing I also took the uh, spark plug connectors off and she's just kind of resting there on that wood um, I noticed on this side here, if you are doing an LT swap and they give you the kit for a 69 or into a 69 Camaro, um, this kit comes with two locations. I'm trying to show it here. You can put this bolt here, which slides this whole assembly back. But the problem I had, and the reason I figured they did this is because it actually, you can see right here, I'll try and show you guys, right here where my finger is, there's a hard pipe here and it hits, so you physically cannot shift it to this location. So, um, I put it in the middle one, the front forward position. I actually, too, when I was putting it on, I don't know if you can tell, but I had to take and cut off for clearance on the header pipes, but I don't, I don't know if we're gonna be able to use the header pipes, um, but we'll figure that out later. If we can, we'll, we'll use the stock ones, but if not, we'll, We'll uh, have to go to aftermarket for clearance. Mm -hmm. And then we talked a little bit about the Holly, but we got the subframe connectors on and the rear, what? Oh, leaf springs. Leaf springs, nice. You wanna show them to us, Wyatt? Our new leaf kit we got I think that came from Detroit Speed. Um pretty pretty easy system. We're waiting. We've already ordered the uh whole rear end. So we got a 12 volt rear end coming in. It was a pain in the butt to get on. This was a pain in the butt. The kit comes with you actually have to change both of those um bushings and everything else and depending on how old or condition of your 69 that can be zero fun then if we look down the body here which is cleaned up pretty much for the most part our paint guy sprayed the hole underneath here but we have the the subframe connectors which were, were a little bit of a challenge to put on um the bolt i had to reverse the bolt i'm gonna try and show you guys the main bolt that goes through that holds this leaf spring up, um, we had to reverse the location because when you actually put these 
And these are the heights. Um, we, we just went with the same kit because it's a heights front end, but these are the heights recommended subframe connectors. It is a bolt-in system. It bolts on the bottom and right there on the top. Um, they do come unpainted, which we're gonna show you guys in a second here what we used on paint. Um, you can powder coat or paint. Uh, we just, it's hard to powder coat the front because the frame's so big, it's like six foot long, right away. It was fun to do, wasn't it? They yeah. said 10 hours, but how good were those instructions? Well, there is only one page of instructions for everything. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And we'll, we'll show you all the leftover bolts because I guess they put in extra for different situations. But anyway, so here's kind of what we're looking at right now. Again, subframe connectors. We've connected from the heights frame there right here. Um, to the back factory frame. It's supposed to significantly help with the performance and handling of the vehicle. All right, so moving on. Here are the instructions. You can find these online too, but it literally is one page. There's your, there's your instructions. And I'll, I'll post a, pitiot, uh, a picture of all the parts that it came with, but it was quite a bit and then again we still have all these extra parts here that just didn't really describe kind of what they were or where they went so i think heights assumes that you probably do this for a living when you um put these kits on uh i as an engineer am pretty mechanically inclined but it like i said it was a challenge so we did take, there's our old frame over there. We have it listed for sale, trying to recoup a little bit of money. And there's our old springs. Um, we did take and uh, this entire kit doesn't come painted, except for the shock. <clears throat> but we did take these off and paint them. The sway bar we painted, the upper and the lower we spray painted, and then the engine mounts here. And then of course we painted the, uh, the frame red now it was a safety red is what we found from who was it we used paint from pur pur 15 i think uh, um we left the heights plate open because we thought it was really cool plus i think this whole kit ran us shipping and everything out the door we are like nine thousand eight hundred yeah um but but again it, it's supposed to lose about 30 pounds and then wow we just saw that we're gonna fix that look at that entire corner is off anyways um the entire kit was close to 10 grand so we kind of wanted it to stick out didn't we mm -hmm. but it's supposed to shave off like 30 pounds we did get it comes with the disc brakes we upgraded the uh brake calibers to powder coated red. It is the drilled that was a uh, drilled and slotted that that was an upgrade as well. Um, it comes everything ready. We just got to buy the master cylinder, which the rear end when it comes in. Here's our old rear end sitting over. I'll try and zoom in, sitting over there. Right there. Um, we have that coming, and it does come with the disc brakes. So is that free? What? Is that free? It's about free. Yeah, about right. so, free to a good home. So whoever wants it, they can come and get it. It's Seriously. Um, here was a POR that we used. Here's a, it's called um, Safety Red. Everything I read online, they recommended doing two coats. Uh, and even the, even the manufacturer of the paint recommended two coats. Uh, this rust preventative now this stuff I've heard like if you've got a rusted frame or car or whatever you can actually paint right over top of this uh, I don't really know um, this was a brand new frame But we did two coats and then the other thing is if you do a coat of the, the rust If you allow it to dry then you have to buff you have to rough it up before you put the final coat on Or you can wait till it gets about an hour and a half it gets sticky and then you can put another coat on so we did two coats of the rust preventative 
and then they recommended two coats on the red we kind of did like a coat and a half we did a coat put it on it took a little bit to dry because it was cold um, it does seem like it dries a lot quicker when it's warm um, but, but anyways it also gets everywhere and you can't get it off anything. yeah it's uh it's very thick and when it dries you, it's kind of hard to see when it dries it almost it almost feels like a powder coat it's, it's really nice so went on oh it's self-leveling which kind of helps there a little bit um, but it turned out really nice so anyways right. go ahead oh yeah so the same company we bought the engine from uh, we also bought the seats from oh yeah the seats was, I forgot about the seats and it was from the engine and the seats are from the same exact Camaro yes which Oh, it's here. You can see. Would you lock it? And then you got pushed really hard. All right, and here's, the so here's what we got. They look the great. The back ones don't fit though. These do. They look great right now. They're really wobbly. We just kind of set them in there. You can kind of see the bracket. So we're gonna have to figure out how to put these in there. For us, we just wanted to see if they actually fit. They yeah. do clear. Um, and like Wyatt was saying, the back they are too narrow. So if you kind of see here where the seat stops and over there, but I'm trying to do a little bit more research. We're going to see if we can find a way to retrofit these or, or get maybe an upholstery person to, um, to do it. Because like I said, we do like the look of the seat, but so it's actually starting to kind of look like a car. You ready to go for a ride? Yep. We'll just fast forward this to two years later and then I know. That, that'll Please. be a possibility. Now there is a guy that's done a video and I watched it this morning on 2016 Camaro seats that have been put into a 69 car. You just gotta fab up the, uh, and then I'll have to research. I don't know if this one has the airbags in there or not. It does have a electrical, yeah, it does have, it says airbag here. Just saw that. So, he uh, said you gotta be really careful running the wires on this because obviously you don't want to trigger the airbag. But um, we'll have to figure all that out later. But right and now we, we got a we got the interior here and everything else. So the only thing that's bad about these seats is that the thing where you buckle your uh, seatbelt into has, has like shards glass. of glass in it. Yeah, yeah, that's from the previous wreck. But we're gonna see if we can use it. If we can, that'd be great. All right, so that's where we're at. Again, September 2nd. We got a ways to go, right? Yeah. We're getting there. Step by step. Right? Yep. All right, you got anything else for the people? Um, no. All right, we're signing off. See you later.